We're going to talk about something today that I love trying to incorporate into my photos. It can be a little bit overdone sometimes, but if it's done properly, it can really enhance an image and add a lot. Let's get into it. It's Utero Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're going to talk about foreground elements in your photos. Might not sound super exciting, but this can add a huge amount to any image. Now, like I said in the intro, this can be a little bit overdone at times, and sometimes doing it just for the sake of it isn't the right decision. But if done properly, this can really add a lot. So what am I talking about first and foremost? Well, essentially, I'm talking about having something in the foreground of your image as a visual element. So you've got your subject, I guess, kind of in the middle. You've got your background and you've got your foreground. Now, when I say subject in the middle, I actually mean in terms of layers, foreground, subject, background. And that can, by itself, make a very visually interesting image. But that foreground element can be all kinds of things and it can achieve a lot if you incorporate it into your photo. First up, it can frame your subject. We've talked about this before, but having something in the foreground can really draw your viewer's eye towards your subject. It can frame your subject in such a way that it just becomes very visually appealing and it can even help to tell a story. For example, this photo, I'm shooting through the crowd to try and get a feeling of the atmosphere when I was there. You've got the street performers playing their trumpets, really nice, and just a straight sort of shot of those would look fine, but I also wanted to get a shot through the crowd. Now you can do this by essentially zooming in to make crowds look bigger than necessarily they are, and shooting through a set of people or just waiting for the right moment. But by having those in the foreground, you really get a feel for the atmosphere and the story of the photo. Similarly here, I've just used the rocks in the foreground to just make it a little bit more of a visually interesting photo of this boat. If I didn't include those, you would just have an awful lot of just sea, which just ne doesn't necessarily make it very interesting. It's not a particularly interesting photo. That's not always the case. This photo, for example, is absolutely fine with just a lot of sea. Minimalism can be great, but sometimes you want to incorporate something a little bit extra into your photo, just as a visual interest. It can also really inform the feel of an image. For example, these photos are nice portraits and they'd be nice just as they are, but by having the Christmas lights in the foreground that I'm kind of shooting through, you really get a feel for the Christmas spirit. You kind of get that, that festive feel out of the portrait which kind of changes things a little bit. Even something like this, there's just a nice splash of color there with the leaves of the tree, which I think I think is really nice. It adds, again, another bit of visual interest. The portrait by itself, I'm sure, would be absolutely fine. But by shooting through this tree, it just sort of adds an extra layer to the image. It's not always about out of focus, shallow depth of field parts of the image though. Sometimes you are shooting a landscape photo. You've got a lovely, beautiful background, maybe a lovely sunset as well. But you might need something in the foreground. You might need something as a visual interest, again, to layer up that photo. This photo, for example, you've got the cliffs, you've got the sunset, but in the foreground, you've got all the rocks and the water and the rock pools, which means you've got a nice visual interest in the foreground, kind of in the middle, and then the background with that sunset as well. Similarly, here is kind of a more autumnal photo. It's really layered up. You have that foreground, the kind of middle part with the trees, and then the background as well with the hills and all that kind of stuff. Not every photo needs needs a foreground element. Some photos actually would suffer by trying to force this into it, but it can really help with the photo. And I guess the best way to think about it is, do you have a strong enough subject by itself to stand as just that's the photo? And if not, what do you need to do to the photo to either enhance the storytelling or the feel, the atmosphere? What can you do to help your viewer? Is it framing it to draw the viewer's eye? Is it something about the, the atmosphere that you want to capture? Or is there just something lacking in the kind of bottom third of the photo? You need maybe something interesting in that foreground. Once you've decided that, you can decide on whether you want something out of focus, something completely in focus that almost works as just a very interesting foreground element for the viewer to look at with those then layers, the middle and the background as well. It all comes down to what's gonna serve the image the best. And that's something that you need to decide as you're taking the image. Maybe even, you know, in the age of not having to worry necessarily about how many shots we're taking, take a few different images. Take one and then take another maybe getting lower to the ground to incorporate a bit of a bit of the ground as the foreground. Maybe move to incorporate something interesting in the foreground. Or like the shot with the street performers, make sure you get that shot, 
but then maybe move back and shoot through the crowd. Then you've got two different versions of that image. You've got one which is just them, and you've got one through the crowd which maybe tells a bit more of a story. Ultimately, like I always say when we talk about these different tutorials, just making that choice when you go to take the photo will almost always result in a better photo. It just means you've thought more about how you want that end result to look and how you want your viewer to actually perceive your image. And just thinking about it, will almost always make for a better photo. If you have any additional tips on top of all of that, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. You guys have some really insightful stuff as well. So I really, really enjoy all of that stuff. Let's get a conversation going on down there. There's links in the description to all of the stuff that I use for these different photos, cameras, lenses, all fun stuff like that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video as well. There's new stuff all the time. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.